Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we all stand? Amen. We've got a packed house today. Praise the Lord. Can we all just enter into His gates with thanksgiving? He's worthy of all of our praise. Can we give Him a hand clap of praise right now and just get ready? Let's worship Him with everything that we've had. Praise the Lord. Victory! 
the sweet, sweet victory in Jesus. For when He died, but He rose on the third day. That's why I have true victory every day. Come on, if you believe that in the house this morning, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise and magnify Him. Let's worship the Lord in this place this morning. Victory. Victory is mine. Amen. Come on. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you, O God, and we bless your name. For you are worthy of our praise, O Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Amen. If you believe that in the house this morning, one more time, just lift your voices and bless the Lord. Come on. Can you open your mouth and just bless him? We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord. I like what I feel in this place this morning. What a God. What a God. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 tells us that every man, according as he's purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Guess what we're fixing to do right now? We're going to give and we're going to give what the Lord has blessed us with. We're going to honor Him. We're going to bless His name. And we're going to do it with praise because I believe giving is a part of worship. Amen? When you give and you give what the Lord has blessed you with, that's worship. And I'm thankful for that in the house this morning. Sister Scarlett, if you would put the ways to give up on the board this morning so we know how to give. We can give with Givelify. We can give with PayPal. We can give and we can mail our checks and our uh, cash or checks to Riverbend Pentecostals 1031 Mill Street, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. Many, many different ways we can give. And I thank God for each and every one of them. And if I, if I can get everybody in the house, I know it's, there's a lot of us here today, but if I can get everybody, there's something about unison that when we do it together, it's not a magic prayer. It's not something like our pastor said, this magic is going to change the world. But it's faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You might not understand it. You might not know it. But God is working. And when you do things, even though you're trusting and believing and not seeing results immediately, God is going to do something. Amen. So I want everybody in the house, if you will, please say this prayer with me this morning and believe that God is going to do something in this place come on upon the authority of your word i have given and it shall be given unto me pressed down shaken together and running over i am a tither and i give my offerings i bring them today into your storehouse therefore the enemy is rebuked the curse is broken and i live under an open heaven you pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessings. I'm blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will, bring your tithe and your offerings this morning. The brown pans are for your offering, and the gold pans are for your tithe. We love you, and we appreciate you. God bless you.
Hallelujah. Come on, church, let's praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad God's fighting your battles for you? Exodus 20 and 4 says, It is the Lord your God that goeth before you to fight your battles for you to save you. God's on my side, Brother Billy. He's fighting for me. I don't know what you're facing, what you're going through this morning, but God is on your side. I said, God is on your side and He is fighting for you this morning. He's going to save you. He's going to help you. He's going to deliver you. I'm so thankful for that. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. David said in Psalms chapter 5, he said, It's unto you that I cry. It's unto you that I lift my voice. It's unto you that I pray. Because Brother Jerry, he's the answer. He's the answer for my problems and for my needs. Let's remember uh, Angela Huggins' uh, fiancé, Caleb Spillers. He took a fall from a ladder of about 15 foot, messed his elbow up, damaged his elbow. He's going to have to have surgery for that. His pelvic is broken, and they've got a wedding coming up in a couple months, I believe. So let's pray for this young man that the Lord will help him. They said they're going to go through with the wedding, even if he's in a wheelchair. And it's a miracle that he wasn't killed, and I'm so thankful for God for that. But let's remember him in prayer. Anybody have any needs this morning that needs to be met? Let's just make it known by the raising of your hand. I know a God that still sits on the throne and still hears and answers prayers. It doesn't matter what it is. So let's bring these needs before the Lord this morning. Lord, we love you this morning, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to meet these needs, God, according to your will, Lord. You know each and every one, God. You know the end from the beginning. You know what I had need of before I could even ask it or think it, Lord. And I bring it to you, Lord, and I play it at your feet this morning. I'm releasing faith in this place, God, that you're going to meet these needs, that you're going to answer these prayers, God. Those that are sick in body, God, our lost loved ones, that prodigal, Lord, that's walked away, God, that unspoken request, Lord. You know each and every one of them, Lord. You see Caleb laying in that hospital bed this morning, God, and we pray, God, that you come in and you touch his body, God. You can mend those broken bones, God, because you took those stripes for our healing, Lord, and I claim it in Jesus' name this morning. I claim it in Jesus' name this morning. Give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
victory belongs to Him. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming today. Worship the Lord. Good looking congregation. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. Where's Ellie at? Come on, baby. She's been sitting back there. Come on up here, Ellie Faith. Amen. Where's Chrislyn? Is Chrislyn here? Oh, there you are. Come on, Ellie. Come on, Chrislyn. This is how we fight our battles. Huh? This is one way we fight our battles. And uh, in uh, Riverbend Kids... They're learning the books of the Bible. There ain't nothing you put in a child more powerful than the Bible. This is how we fight our battles. The book says, if you train them up in the way they should go when they're old, it won't depart from them. They'll always know. And you won't. And if they walk away from God, you want them to be miserable. You better not be bragging on them when they're out there living for the devil. But you want, Brother Jerry, their heart to always know where help is. Right. And we put it in them. Right. So, Ellie, now she don't know them all yet. 
But the one she does know, you know them forward and backwards, don't you? You ready? You're not? Oh, okay. Here. Now, hold that microphone up where they can hear you now. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. That's saying backwards. 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel, Ruth, Judges, Joshua, Deuteronomy, Number, Exodus, Genesis. All right. Wait just a minute, then you can. All right, your turn. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Very good. Amen. Come on, they deserve more than that. That's a, that's this is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. Come on now. Come on now. Hell can't have our kids. The devil can't have our kids. Come on, you listen to me right now. The world wants them out there juking and jiving to some of that nonsense out there. You better rejoice and you better be excited and give praise to God when they want to learn about Him. That's how we fight our battles. We're in a war. We're in a war now. We're in a war, and they're going to get something in them they won't ever forget. They'll never forget it. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost rising up in this place. It's been here all day. It's, it's been here all day. It's been here since before all everybody got here. But there's something moving and grooving in the house of the Lord right now. And I'm going to call you to a place of awareness and attention and focus because God's going to change your life today. I know you say that all the time, Pastor. I believe that all the time. Every time we come together has the potential to rock your world, change your life, whereby you change the world. The conflict started. The reason why we have a battle started because Lucifer decided he wanted to be king in heaven. In Isaiah 14, 12, and 13, he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Please understand this. The enemy, the devil, Satan, is a defeated foe. He was kicked out of heaven, or as one writer wrote it, flipped out of heaven with the finger of God. And he has no chance, no hope, no plan, no desire even to usurp the authority and place of God. He's learned his lesson about messing with God. I said he's learned his lesson about messing with God. He knows his destiny. The enemy of our souls is a liar and a father of all lies. He's a liar from the beginning. And when we believe the lies of hell, that represents the only measure of victory that the enemy has over the Lord. When he can get us to believe his lies, when he gets us to fall under the, the umbrella of his deception, that represents the only measure of victory he has over the Lord. Now here's the picture. When we serve ourselves, we do it in one of three ways. That's all there is. We serve ourselves, we do it in one of three ways. Sometimes one at a time, sometimes two, sometimes we do them all at once. But there are only three ways to serve yourself. They are the craving for physical pleasure, which the Bible calls the lust of the flesh. The desire for everything we see, which the Bible calls the lust of the eye. And pride in our personal possessions and achievements, which the Bible calls the pride of life. 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 16. These motivating factors, none of these three factors are, are done under the influence of God, but under the influence of the world, which is governed by its own God. There's a God of the world. How many know that? And the God of the world, he operates, he attacks, and he fights, and he lives in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. 
Now these tools and these weapons and these areas of influence are powerful, but they are temporary. There is nothing that operates in the realm of lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life that lasts forever. Nothing. Not even diamonds. Come on now. Nothing in the realm of the devil or of the world lasts forever. Uh, you got to hear that right now. Don't you think for one second that anything that you get blessed with uh, out there under the worshiping the enemy and the world uh, and the lust thereof is going to last forever. I want you to know, honey, it's all coming down. The Bible says, seeing that what manner of man we should be, uh, that all the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. Uh, there ain't but one thing in this world that you're going to get a hold of uh, that's going to last forever. And it's what those little gals were just quoting to you uh, and the scriptures, heaven and earth will pass away. Away, but my word will not pass away. <laughs> Lucifer exalted himself against God. And he discovered the error of his ways when he was removed from heaven as quickly and powerfully as a bolt of lightning fall out of heaven along with the angels who conspired with them. And attached to the devil and his angels was a destiny of eternal damnation in the lake of fire, Revelation 12 and 9, Matthew 25 and 41. The battle in heaven is over. The battle in heaven is over and Satan is defeated. But the battle here on earth is still raging. And it is ultimately not between God and the devil. That fight's already been settled. Get it in you. That fight's been settled. But the fight here on earth is between truth and lie. Because whichever one you believe determines the victory. The truth of God is you were created to live forever. You were created to live in victory. You were created to live an overcoming life. You were created to be with Him forever. But sin took that destiny. But it didn't have that much power because love and mercy and grace restored that possibility on Mount Calvary. And eternal life once again awaits us. There's still heaven to gain and a hell to shun. There's still an eternity that awaits us because Jesus paid the price. The lie is that if it feels good, looks good, or makes you happy, it must be right. That's the lie. If it feels good, looks good, or makes you happy, then it must be right. As a matter of fact, the world preaches a gospel that says, I feel Jesus moving in here. Please don't cut me this preacher off. Please don't turn me off. The lie that the world tells is you should be the Lord of your life. And you should decide what is right for you. When we believe this lie, we think we are king. We believe that we are king. But truthfully, we have actually given up the right for that and allowed the deceiver, the enemy, Satan himself, to ascend and sit on the throne of our lives. It is there where he orchestrates and conducts our life, leading us like a puppet, holding up the, the strings in the wood, orchestrating as it would, as it were, with thread, orchestrating our lives in to an out of control spiral. Hear me right now. Jesus said the thief cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's all he's good for. That's all he is. If you dance to the devil's tune, you will find yourself trapped in the devil's trap. You, oh, come on, Holy Ghost power, help me. You dress it up all you want to. You call it all you want to. And it might get you in the flow of what is popular. But I want to let you know that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. There's coming a day when everybody's going to realize that there's only one way and there's only one King and there's only one God. Let me tell you something. The gospel this world's preaching is a lie. Kill, steal, and destroy. That's all it's good for. Because that's all he came for. He can't touch the Lord. Except when he touches the apple of his eye. That's you. And that's me. 
The only way the devil can get back at God is through his prized creation, mankind. Oh, I feel Jesus. Y'all feel the Holy Ghost in the house right now? Why don't we just praise him for just a minute? Come on, why don't you just praise the Lord? Yeah, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come on, let's thank him. Praise him. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise Him on the stringed instruments and the organs. Praise Him on the high sounding cymbals. Praise Him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise Him. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. He's here. He's here. Them goosebumps you feel running all up and down you, that ain't hype. That's the presence of the Lord moving in the place. Second Kings chapter number 11 tells of Athaliah. That was her name. She was the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. She married the king of Judah. And his name was Jehoram. And Jehoram died and his and Athaliah's son Ahaziah became the king of Judah. And all of them live terrible, wicked, evil lives such as characterized by Ahab and by more so Jezebel. Now Ahaziah is an evil and wicked king and it's not very long till Jehu rises up. Jehu's the king of Israel and he rises up and he kills Ahaziah. Now when Athaliah hears of it, that's Ahaziah's mama, when she hears that her son is dead, she goes, I want you to hear me now. She decides, I'm going to preach a minute, Brother Brando, you ready? She decides that she's going to kill all. Everybody say all. all. She is going to destroy and kill every remaining heir. That means every child that is in the bloodline to be the next king, she's going to kill them all. Only trouble is, the priest's wife, she found one. The wife of the priest took a baby boy named Joash. And she took him to the temple. I got to preach just a minute right now. And I want to let somebody know that Lord, I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how low you go and how much of a willing participant you are in the devil's games. The Lord never puts you in a place where there's not at least one flicker of hope. Right. Oh, come on right now. Pharaoh decided he was going to kill all the babies. But there was a little boy named Moses that lived in the river. Just the same here as Athaliah decides she's going to kill all the seed and she's going to ascend to the throne. But the Bible tells us that there was a little baby named Joash who the man of God's wife grabbed and took him to the temple. i got to let somebody know that he always leaves a way for truth. There's somebody in the house and somebody watching right now that you need to hear this. It is not hopeless. I don't care how bad it's got. I don't care what you've lost. I don't care how bad the enemy throws at you. I don't care what your reputation has sunk to. I don't care what the ravages of hell have done to your body. There's still hope. Can I say it one more time? The enemy wanted to destroy the seed. But there was one saved. Well, that ain't my message, but that's what somebody needs to hear. You thought it was hopeless, but I want to let you know that somewhere hidden in the house of God. Because that's where Sister Priest took him. Ah, come on right now. She took him and hid him in the house of God. I want you to know right now, if there's anywhere the devil ain't comfortable, it better be in the house of God. <laughs> if there's anywhere the enemy ain't coming looking for you, oh, hear me right now. Sister Maria, there's a reason why we got to come here as often as we can because this is a safe place. And when we begin to worship the Lord, the devil's got to go. Somebody, 
You're in a safe place. You're in a place where the devil has no authority. He has no jurisdiction. He has no right. He has no power. His weapons don't work in the house of God. They don't work here. So for a time, please be seated. Athaliah ascended to the throne. For six years, the wrong king reigned. And for six years, the true king was waiting in the house of the Lord. That's the truth. You read it for yourself. It's a short chapter. She hid from the enemy in the house of the Lord. Brother David, how powerful is that? Oh, how powerful that is. I read something the other day, and I'm going to leave this point right now. But if you've got some troublemakers in church, stop trying to fix them yourself. Just let your faith keep rising. And it's going to get to the point you're going to leave them behind. <laughs> Say, oh, no. Yeah, there's always, there's always a devil trying to sneak in. But when we do what we've done today, and we sing like we've sung today, and you worship like you've worshipped today, he ain't here. Right. I said he ain't here. Oh, yeah, I got to tell you, I preached it. I'm going to preach it again. You know why he leaves? Huh? You know why he leaves when you begin to worship the Lord? Because if he stays, he's got to worship too. Huh? He's got to fall down and worship him too. Because there's nobody that knows like the devil how powerful the Lord is. There's nobody that knows like the devil how beautiful and majestic and holy and righteous the Lord is. So when we begin to praise him, he leaves. Because if he stays, he's got to join in. Then came the seventh year. Anybody that studied the Bible a little bit, you know what six means. That's the number of a man. And you know what seven means. That's the number of God. When six leaves and seven rises up, let me tell you something. There's power. It's about to move into an arena of the supernatural. It's about to move into an arena where the Lord begins to operate. And in the seventh year, oh, I'm so excited. My feet are just shaking up and down right now. I promise you are. Sometimes they start hopping all by themselves. They really do. They really do. It's not as easy as it once was, but they hop. I feel them. In the seventh year, everybody say the seventh year. Seventh year. Ooh, somebody. Oh, it's a new day. It's a new dawn. It's a new time. Oh, it's ready for a new you. Today can be the first day of the rest of your life. Oh, in the seventh year, the priest Jehoiada fetched the rulers and the captains of the guard. He brought all of the military commanders in. And he brought them into the house of the Lord. Here we are again. They're going to meet against the enemy, but they're going to come do it in the house of the Lord. They're not meeting in the barracks. They're not meeting in the, in the soldiers' houses. They're not meeting on the street, but they're meeting in the house of the Lord. Here we are again. And he showed them the king's son. That's the little boy who's been waiting. And he shows them the son. Seven-year-old little boy, Brother Richard. That's what he brought them there first. To show them hope lives. Huh? Hope lives. And he gave them some instructions. He said, one-third of you... That's one third of the military will be keepers of the watch of the king's house. A third part will stand at the gate and then the last part, the last group, you're going to keep watch around the king. And I wish I could have done it this morning. I really didn't because I thought y'all would go nuts and I wouldn't get to finish preaching. But look at here, that third got from one corner of the sanctuary to the round of the other corner and stood between the altar and the enemy. Oh, there's a whole lot of preaching in here. Y'all feel free to steal it. You won't do as good as me, but y'all go ahead and feel free to steal it if you want to. That's, that's just my prayer. <laughs> no. He said, you're going to compass the king round about. 
With your weapons in your hand. Everybody, can you say that? With your weapons in your hand. Won't you hold your hand up like you got your sword in it? Now don't get too excited because that ain't the good part. The best part's coming. With your weapons in your hand. And if any of the enemy comes within range, kill them. You stay with the king. You can put your hands down now. And the Bible said they did as the priest commanded them. Hear me right now. Every revival begins with obedience. Right. Amen. Oh, Ronnie, there you are. You was late, man. You keep doing that to you. I'm going to have to get a hold of you because I look for you. When you turn your car around and the Holy Ghost says you go there. Every revival begins with obedience. Every move of God, every deliverance begins with obedience. And they did as the priest commanded them. Brother David, would you get my sword off the wall in there? I really want, I started to do it and then I changed my mind, I decided to. It's not real, so nobody worry. Are you taking notes and stuff or not? You are? All right, who's not taking notes? Who's not paying much attention? <laughs> Come on, Brother Cody with the muscles. Uh, he's paying attention. I'm just, get your sword ready. Just get up here where they can see you. Just anywhere, just anywhere right here. He's nervous right now, so y'all just ignore him. I want you to hold your sword up like you're guarding the king. Now just stand there for a few minutes. Now look at here. They did as the priest commanded them. Second Kings chapter 11, verse number 11. And the guard stood, every man, with his weapons in his hand, round about the king. From the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar. And the temple. Verse 12. And he brought forth the king's son. And he put the crown on him. And he gave him the testimony. And they made him king. And anointed him. Now are you ready? Now brother Cody. I want you to clap your hands holding that sword. Can't do it, can you? Hold that sword for just a minute. Ooh, baby, you better hold on. I'm fixing to preach for about five or eight more minutes and it's fixing to turn loose in this place. Might be longer than that, but I, I'm hoping. Look at here. And they brought forth the king's son and they put a crown on him. And it gave him the testimony. That's the authority. That's the direction. That's the provenance, if you will. And they made him king. And they made him king. And anointed him. And they clapped their hands. And said, God save the king. Clap your hands with the sword one more time, Brother Cody. In order to clap their hands, they had to first lay their weapons down. And you want to know why they could lay their weapons down? Because the king was in place. Put your sword on the ground, Brother Cody. Now clap your hands under the Lord. Come on. Look at here.
just a minute. Thank you, Brother Cody. Leave that lay there, though. I want it to mean something. When the king is in place, you no longer have to fight. Somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord right now. You know why you're wore out? You know why you're stressed out? You know why you're wearing down physically, mentally, and emotionally? It's because you've not yet got the king in place. But you put the king in place and you're going to lay down your weapons uh, and you're going to begin to fight your battles uh, the way the Lord intended you to fight your battles. Oh, I got to prove it to you. Oh, you. Did I tell you the next verse in the New Living Translation? All right. Are y'all ready, Freddie? Come on now, look at here. Verse 13 in the New Living Translation. When I found you, you know who that is? That's somebody that wanted the throne for themselves, but it wasn't theirs. And they killed, and they stole, and they destroyed so they could have it. And for six years, in the man's measurement, they won. But the seventh year has rolled around. Listen to what the Bible says. When the enemy, when the devil, when Satan, when Athaliah heard the noise. Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Come on now. Come on now. Look at here. You see what happened? They laid their well. The king is in place. They laid their weapons down. And they clapped their hands and lifted their voice to the Lord, to the king. But guess who was listening? They thought they won. She thought she won. She was sitting on the throne with confidence. But then she heard something. Come on. That's right. Come on now. Won't you let the devil hear you clap unto the Lord? Why don't you let the devil reel and let you tell that the Lord is on the throne? Why don't you let hear the enemy hear you tell the king is in place? Wait just a minute. Y'all ain't got it right yet. Y'all ain't got it right yet. Because the Bible says they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. Which means uh, the king is in place. We can't just be satisfied. We do that a lot. We like clapping because it's safe. But you've got to open your mouth uh, because the enemy's got to know why you're clapping. Oh, come on now. You're clapping because the king is on the throne. You're clapping because the king is in place where he belongs. Now, why ain't we shouting now? We're about to. Hold on just a minute. You know what she was listening for? The noise. And it was a twofold noise. It was a clap and a voice. Look at here, verse... Number 14 in the New Living Translation. When she arrived, she saw the newly crowned king standing in his place of authority. Standing in his place of authority. Somebody's going to get this in a minute. And when you do, I'm going to be done. You're going to shut me down. Somebody's going to get uh, that I've got to stop trying to be king of my life uh, and lord of my life. uh, And I've got to let the one who it was designed for be king. And I've got to stop running my mouth uh, and fighting my battles uh, and trying to do this all by myself. uh, And just let the enemy know that I am aware that the king is on the throne. The king is where he belongs in the place of authority in the place of majesty, and he wears the crown. I'm getting ready to close. Psalms chapter 47, verse number two. For the Lord most high is terrible. That really means what it says. We don't mind him being terrible. Because brother Richard, what it's saying 
is I'm declaring the perspective of my Lord to the enemy. Boy, are y'all with me still? I'm a little scared right now. Because we've juked and jived, but we still ain't got it. Because even when I told y'all, y'all had to open up your mouth and everybody like, mm -mm. <laughs> I don't mind a clap, but I ain't going to put myself out there. Right, oh, you will. When you get sick enough of the devil using you for his whipping boy. When you get your belly full of hell looking like they're winning. You about to follow this formula that I'm laying out for you. Because it ain't about you and it ain't about me. But it's all about him. And I've got to get this into the arena where victory is assured. Oh, oh Lord help me right now. I got to get this to the place where I know who the winner is. And when I'm trying to fight, I may not be the winner. But when I bring this into the arena of where it's God and the devil. The Lord is most high. Is terrible. Look at here. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us. That's my enemies. And the nations under our feet. I want somebody, I want you, get your pencil out. I don't know if you write in your Bible or not, but you might ought to start. I want you to write this down right here. This is my scripture. Because we're declaring the Lord. Look at here. For the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob whom he loved. I'm not going to preach there for a little while, but he loved Jacob when Jacob was a scallywag. He was a liar and a thief and a cheat, but he loved him. Because he saw something in him he could use. You see, Jacob might have been a scallywag, but he didn't have no quit in him. He knew what he wanted and he pressed on to get it. And then the Bible says, Selah. That's the title of my message today, by the way. It is an interlude. A space. A dramatic pause. Between declaring who he is and then letting him be that. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Stand with me right now. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob whom he loved. Selah. It's just a moment we stop here. It's a pause. A dramatic pause. It's like where you are on the edge of your seat. I want you to look at verse number 5. It says, God is gone up. With a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Where is he going up to? I'm glad you asked. To the throne. Yeah. He's going up to the throne. You see because the pause was between me seeing who he is. And him going there. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Are you ready? Sing ye praises with understanding. Ha, 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 ha. What's going to happen if we start applying this to our life? 
and stop using praise and worship as something that we better do or somebody might get mad at us. Have you ever been in the house of God and you were fighting all kinds of hell and you wanted to start clapping your hands but they felt like they had million pound bricks tied to them? Yeah. Woo, baby. Sing ye praises with understanding. I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no. He's not a baby in Bethlehem. He was, but he's not. He's not a mangled mess hanging on the cross. No, no, he's not. He's a king. And he's on the throne. Look at here. You ready for verse number eight? For God reigneth over the heathen. He's king over people who don't know it. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Brother David, this next verse, boy, we, we like to say it. And we like to get excited about it. And boy, we like to just, woo, and we, and we, but we really don't understand it. But verse number one, right at the beginning, before he declared who he was and before he declared where he was, he said, Psalm 47, 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. See, this is verse number one. You know why it's verse number one? It's because we've got to first get established who's the boss. That's right. The enemy likes me when I look like this. Because he knows that I will succumb to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Let me tell you something else. You know what he can't do when I got my sword in my hand? He can't hear me clap. Because when he hears me clap, you know what he knows? The king is on the throne. And he knows it. for a minute I ain't shouting for a minute I'm about to show you listen you've been on the throne all my life Jack but I'm letting you know right now you ain't no more I ain't perfect I ain't lined up just right but I know who's in charge and I know where my help is and I don't have to fight no more And when the enemy heard the noise, I said, when the enemy heard the noise, let me tell you something. Brother Richard, you know why we praise? It ain't because we got a reputation to keep up. It's because we know who's on the throne. Is there anybody in the house, anybody, that you're ready for hell to know you ain't the devil's punk no more. I know that's a little bit crude language, but that's how he's viewed you. He's viewed you as a chump. 
as a pushover, as a wannabe, as a fake. But it ain't never been about you. It's always been about who you serve. So devil, get off the throne of my life. I don't belong to you. You didn't pay for this privilege. I'm going to serve the one who bought me and who paid for me and who shed his blood so I can be free. Could we just one time, I, I know it, it ain't about you. Do you know I, I want to punch people in the nose sometimes that hold back their praise because they don't like who's singing or don't like who's preaching. Brother David, it ain't all about that. I want to let you know you come into this sanctuary, you can get out in your front yard. Yeah. You can go to your laundry room. You can go to the bathroom at work. Matter of fact, you can stand up at your desk. They might think you're crazy, but they only do it one time. Because when you start clapping your hands and lift your voice, then everybody's going to know who your king is. Everybody's going to know who's in charge of you. you know I ain't intimidated by nobody up in this place I don't even need to talk to y'all what do you got to lose why, why does it scare us why are we intimidated why do we hold back the devil don't know what's going on in your life except how you act Why don't everybody in this place for just one moment let the devil believe he's lost in all of our lives? Really, what, what's the hold up, guys? I'm not being mean or ugly, but my goodness gracious, man. Come on, Crystal. Come on up here, honey. 
don't want up here. I know John and Kaylee, they ain't ready for this yet, but you are. That's right. Wallet Gold, let me tell you something. Come here. Come here. Come on up here with me. Come on up here with me. Wallet Gold, let me tell you something right now. You feel to do what you was going to do while ago, and, and you started it and you stopped because you was the only one in here doing it. We was ready. To, uh huh. Right, right. I saw you. About three quarters of the way through my sermon, her hands went in the air. And she did about two claps. And then she like, oh, not the right time. Let me tell you something, honey. It was the right time. Go, yep, 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 yep. That's what we're looking for. It's somebody there to say, hey, what? suit nobody up. This ain't about souping nobody up. I just want you to win. You weren't made to lose. You're made to win. You're made to be victorious. The enemy has been defeated. All we're trying to do is go to that place where he's always defeated. And that is at the feet of the king. It appears to me, Brother Shannon, that the enemy's listening. And what he hears from me lets him know who's in charge. So one more time, all over this house, can we let hell know he ain't the boss of us no more?
want to declare today, church, in the name of Jesus, that this word that we heard today, it did not fall on the stony ground. It did not fall by the wayside. It did not fall amongst the thorns and the thistles, but it was planted on broken dirt. The seeds of faith were planted today, and they are going to grow. And I want to charge you today, do not let this word stay here. We have to take this word outside these walls. There are people out there who are looking for an overcomer. There are people out there who are looking for what they want in their life. And we're going to take it to them. We're going to take it out in the world. We're going to take the word of God out there. And it's going to be because of people like you and people like me who have lived through some stuff and have become overcomers. We're going to be the witnesses to this world as God is revealing his truth into this world. And as you return to your seats this morning, I want to share. I want to share a little testimony with you. I'm not done yet, but I think I've got something started. The other day, I'm, I just want to reveal to you how the Lord's working. He's He's opening up doors for ministry. He's opening up avenues to be able to get His Word out there, to be able to get His story out there, to let people know that He is for them. Right. The other day. I was in my office and I had some co-workers. They were talking about how hard it was for them to keep their hair clean because it was getting a little long. And I just overheard them and I walked out there. I said, what are y'all talking about? They said, well, my hair's getting a little long and thinking about cutting it off, going to donate it. I said, why? They were talking about how that they can only wash it every so many days because it's just too difficult to mess with. I said, well, my wife's hair is pretty long. And I said, we got family members whose hair is down to their behind and all that and she said are you Pentecostal <laughs> I said yes ma'am she said is your wife Pentecostal yes ma'am this woman is about I think she's almost 65 she's about to retire and she said she was thinking about her grandma she said my grandma was an ordained Pentecostal minister that believed in talking in tongues that believed in Jesus' name, baptism. She believed in all that. I said, well, I left it alone. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to push it. That was on a Friday. Monday rolled around, same lady. She came to my office. She said, I want to show you what I did over the weekend. I said, okay. She said she went to a paint party. She painted all these little Easter things, these little ceramic deals for her grandkids. I said, oh, those are pretty cool. It looks real pretty. And I said, well, I got something I want to show you that I did over the weekend. I'm not bragging or anything. I just, I wanted to do this for the church. But I showed her a picture of the bottom of the baptistry right there. And she said, well, I, I like what you built, but I don't like that box looking thing in there. She said, that looks like a coffin. I said, Miss Ellen, that's exactly what that is. <laughs> I said, that right there is a place where you go to let your sins be washed away. That right there is where you go whenever you want to leave your past behind. That right there is where you go when you want your life changed. Whenever you want to come up out of the water a new creature. That right there is where you go when you want a new life. I'm going to tell you something, church. God is opening up doors for ministry, and it's happening in your everyday life. It is not just behind this pulpit, but it's how we live our lives. It's the way that we do things on a daily basis. It's how you live the Word of God is how people are watching. You may be the only Bible that some people ever see. Let them see what the Word of God has done in your life. Let them see the example of how you became an overcomer because of Him. I want to let you know you have the power to change somebody's life. I ask you to use it wisely. To use the tools that God has given you. Use the tools that He has given you to change, change somebody's world. We have that power. We have that ability. Not only do we have the option to, but we are required as children of the Most High God. I want to go into the announcements. There will be praise team practice tomorrow evening instead of prayer meeting. Please bring candy for Easter. Also, we'll need boiled eggs and plastic eggs for the kids' egg hunt. Saturday evening, we will meet at the church at 6 p.m. to get eggs ready for Easter. Anybody is welcome to come. April 17th is the men's crawfish boil in Carruthersville. It's $30 a person, and money is due today. 
church cleaning this week is team number three. That's Sister Kim and whoever else would volunteer to help her out. April 7th, we're going to have an ice cream party with the Riverbend kids. We're going to have a rally in Carothersville on April 9th. I ask that please make plans to go to that. They are great meetings to go to. Great times to spend with the Lord. Missouri Ladies Conference is April 29th through May 1st at Chateau on the Lake in Branson. Sign-up sheet is in the back of the church. NAYC is July 28th through the 30th in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, probably by Wednesday, we need to know if you're 99.9% .9 sure you're going to get to go to that because the window to buy tickets is coming up. And if you don't do it right when it comes open, you're not going to get them. And also something that's not in the announcements because we were trying to teach a little responsibility to our youth class. Uh, those that have told their parents and been prepared, we are leaving for youth convention at Wednesday at around noon. So if you can be here by 12, if you are one of the ones that are getting to go, please do so. Other than that, I've been told that I absolutely cannot forget this because we have a very special birthday boy in the house this morning. Brother Jerry, won't you come on and stand up and let's sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> Is there anybody else that has a birthday or anniversary in the house that would like to come forth and bring your offering? Or is he the only one? Oh, we got Brooklyn. Come on, Brother Jerry. We all see you. Come on. Don't be trying to do the easy way. All right, if you had a birthday, let's all stand. Everyone that had a birthday, and we're going to sing happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And the best one you've ever Right, and the anniversaries, if you'd please stand, we'll sing happy anniversary, do you? A happy anniversary to you, a happy anniversary to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy anniversary to you, a happy anniversary to you. And the best one you've ever had. All right. Brother David, if you would dismiss us, we would appreciate it. Amen. You are dismissed. Oh, hold on just a second, everybody. Brother Terrence has an announcement. Uh, Brother GL, if you would, would you come up here? Brother GL? We got you something from the church it's for you. Just an appreciation of all the things you do for us. We love you. We just thank you. Thank you all so much. I know I don't look 48 years old. But I feel it. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate this church. I love you. Thank you all for coming today. We'll see you back again. God bless you. You're dismissed.